Game 4 of the Canada-Soviet Series, coming to you live from Vancouver. Brought to you by Toronto Dominion Bank, the bank where people make the difference. By Gulf Oil Canada Limited, its dealers, agents, and distributors across Canada. It's game four, and the big difference as I see it from two years ago is that while the two teams are tied at one win and one loss and one tie apiece, there's a far different attitude amongst the fans here in Vancouver. So far, at least, there is not a sign of hostility. And you can attribute this to the first two games, but most particularly the comeback by Team Canada in Winnipeg on Saturday. We'll be able to tell you more as I see Don Chevrier and Howie Meeker are all set inside the arena to bring you the play-by-play -play and the color commentary of this fourth game. Okay, Don. All right, Johnny and uh, Howie, tonight the Team Canada lineup is going to be just about the same as it was in that victory in Toronto, except that Marty Howe makes it three Howes in this game tonight. That should be interesting, but after tonight, Don, we lose home ice advantage. Some of our big-name scorers haven't really hit the score sheet yet, so tonight's the night, and if Team Canada comes out checking, got to have another dandy All goal. All right, let's go to our co-host now tonight, Bill Good, Jr. Hello, everyone. Well, the interest has really peaked here in Vancouver since the first game in Quebec City. 16,000 people are expected to be in the arena. People were waiting overnight for tickets here in the Pacific Coliseum is completely sold out. And I'll be traveling between the first and second periods in the intermissions, and we'll talk to as many of these fans in Vancouver as we can. John? We're just moments away from the colorful introductions and the face-off for the halfway mark in the eight-game series. This is game four of the Soviet Canada series from Vancouver. KTEL presents Jukebox Jive, 25 great hits of the Jukebox era by the original stars, the Beaumarks. Oh, clap your hands, clap your hands. Vlad McFadder. Lover, please, please come back. Don't take the train coming down the track. Paul Anka. Oh, please Here, Nell Shannon, I Bill Haley, Mitch Ryder, The Tokens, Frankie Lyman, me. Joey D. All the great hits of the Jukebox era. Get Jukebox Jive, 25 original hits, 4.99 from KTEL. Paper cassette. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the fourth game of the series between the national team of USSR and Team Canada 74. Bonsoir, mesdames, messieurs, et bienvenue à cette quatrième partie de la série de huit entre l'équipe nationale de l'Union soviétique et l'équipe Canada 74. Voici maintenant l'alignement des deux équipes pour la rencontre de ce soir. En tout premier lieu, celui de l'Union soviétique. L'entraîneur-chef, the head coach, Boris Kulagin. Et ses adjoints, his assistants, Konstantin Loktev et Vladimir Urzinov. Le numéro 13, le capitaine Boris Mihailov. Le numéro 1, Alexander Sidelnikov. Le numéro 2, Alexander Gousset. Le numéro 3, Vladimir Luchenko. Le numéro 5, Yuri Lapkin. Le numéro 6, Valérie Vastilia. Le numéro 7, Gennady Tsigenko. Le numéro 9, Alexander Volchko. Le numéro 10, Alexander Maltz. Le numéro 11, Yuri Lebedev. Le numéro 12, Victor Kuznetsov. Le numéro 16, Vladimir Petrov. Le numéro 19, Vladimir Chadrin. Le numéro 22, Vyacheslav Anisin. Le numéro 24, Alexander Bodunov. Le numéro 27, Alexander Sapelkin. Le numéro 30, Konstantin Klimov. 
le numéro 17, Valérie Arlamov. Le numéro 20, Vladislav Trechak. Et le numéro 15, Alexander Yakushev. For Team Canada 74, would you please welcome coach Billy Harris and general manager Bill Hunter. And now, here is Team Canada, number 30, Jerry Cheevers. Number one, Don McLeod. On defense, number three, Jean-Claude Tremblay. Number 12, Pat Stapleton. Number 18, Paul Schmier. Number two, Rick Lee. Number 17, Rick Smith. Number 10, Marty Howe. The Fords. Number 14, Ralph Backstrom. Number 11, Mark Howe. Number 7, Andre Lacroix. Number 23, Johnny McKenzie. Number 4, Mike Walton. Number 20, Bruce McGregor. Number 19, Paul Anderson. Number 21, Serge Bernier. Number five, Régent Houle. Number 27, Frank Mahovlich. Number 16, Bobby Hall. And number nine, Gordy Hall. Mesdames, Messieurs, voulez-vous vous lever pour l'interprétation des hymnes nationaux de l'Union soviétique et du Canada? Please stand for the national anthem.
the Canadian Amateur Hockey Association. Traditionally, in each game, the players will exchange gifts. In the Canadian leg of the series, the Canadian team will present the Soviets with gifts. And the other way around, of course, it'll be the Russians giving Canada gifts overseas. Here's what the Russians receive. The pennant commemorating the series, plus a sterling silver pin and a gold ring for each of the Soviet players, the gifts from Team Canada, 1974. This is game four of the Canada-Soviet series from Vancouver. Я люблю то, как в Канаде растут сбережения. В Торонто Доминион Банке есть много способов сбережений. И потому что проценты так высоки, сбережения растут быстро. И еще дружественные служащие в Торонто Доминион даже помогут вам избрать такой сберегательный план, который будет наиболее подходящим для вас. Эх, канадцы, вы, наверное, имеете большое удовольствие наблюдать, как растут ваши сбережения в Торонто Доминион. Это банк, где люди составляют разницу. All the officials are going now in center ice for the official face-off. As a memento of this occasion and as an indication of the support all Canada gives to the Garibaldi bid for 1980 Winter Olympics, Nancy Green Rain will present mounted pucks to the official party. En guise de souvenir de cet événement, Nancy Green Rain remettra aux dignitaires une rondelle portant l'effigie de Équipe Canada 74. Well, Paul Henderson showed flashes of his great form of 1972 in Winnipeg, Howie, when he got those two late goals in the third period Saturday. Well, he's now a member of the Toronto Toros, and he was a hero of that 72 series. He's had many good scoring opportunities, and uh, he could win this series again for Team Canada. A new member of the Edmonton Oilers is number 20, Bruce McGregor, formerly of the New York Rangers. He's a great up-and-down hockey player, a come-from-behind hockey player, and a good checker. That's just about the right formula for international competition, and when you need a big goal, he'll get the chance. And, of course, sore ribs and all, number nine, Gordy Howe, is back tonight. Well, what can you say about big Gordy? He's hockey's greatest superstar. I think he realizes the dream tonight, playing with his two talented sons, Mark and Marty, and I'd look for him to put on quite a show. Another guy having a great series is this man right here, number 16 for the Soviets, Vladimir Petrov. He's a real strong skater. They use this gentleman here on the power play and to kill penalties, and I think he's their toughest hockey player. He's real good with the stick, and you watch him when he just loses the puck or, or evades a check. Watch what he does with the stick. He's a handyman. And how about this guy? Number 15, the leader of the Soviet team, Alexander Yakushev, who through 11 games against Canada, 72 and 74, has 11 goals. And that's consistency. And he was a dynamite in Winnipeg on Saturday as well, Yakushev. Of course, there's Valery Harlamov, number 17. And you say the Soviets don't have a star system. Well, that was broken here in Canada because they agreed to allow their top players in the judgment of the fans in Canada to be introduced last of all. And they got rousing ovations along with members of Team Canada 1974. And so we're just about set to go for game four of a tremendous international hockey series here at the Pacific Coliseum in Vancouver. The referee is Waldo Sepecki of Poland, Doug Robb and Valentin Nikolce of the linesman, and the Soviets move it down the ice off the opening faceoff on the stick of J.C. Tremblay. A hit for Gordy Howe, broken up by Harlemov, a shot right off the bat, high over top of the goal and out of play. Faceoff is going to come outside the Canadian blue line. Jerry Cheevers is back in goal, having given way to Don McLeod on Saturday. 
Backstrom is starting at center with Gordy Howe on the right side and Mark Howe on the left side. Marty Howe in defense with J.C. Tremblay. The Howe family realizing a lifelong dream finally on the ice together against the Soviet Union. And this is J.C. Tremblay, number three. Swings away from a high loft. Feeds Gordy Howe offside at the Soviet blue line. A 3-3 tie in Quebec, a 4-1 Team Canada win in Toronto, and an 8-5 Soviet victory Saturday in Winnipeg brings us to this point here in Vancouver tonight. Petrov on the faceoff against the veteran Ralph Backstrom. To Gordy Howe, too far for Backstrom. Now it's over on the stick of Valery Harlamov, number 17. Howe checking him, swings away inside the Team Canada line, is passed to an open wing, goes back outside the blue line. Vasiliev takes over. Gets it back to Harlamov as the Soviets control the early seconds of play. Harlamov being challenged and checked by Marty Howe. Into the corner is number 11, Mark Howe, the 19-year-old sensation of the 72 U.S. Olympic team. A battle there. It's on the stick now of Ralph Backstrom. Backstrom being watched by Petro to Howe to Tremblay. Hounded by Mihailov, number 13. Canadians again, as in Winnipeg, having trouble clearing. Here is Mihailov. Right at the doorstep of Cubers, turned away, and a stiff check from Gordy Howe. That's Mihailov reeling. J.C. Tromley simply plays it ahead of the Soviet line. All Soviets so far in the first 90 seconds, and now Billy Harris makes changes as they go. Gordy Howe is still out there. Here is Yakushev with Shedrin. Turned around, a weak backhand shot to Cheaters. He'll hold on as Team Canada regroups for the faceoff. They played a minute and 39 seconds. It's been all Soviets, Howie. Certainly a completely different start. Gordy Howe took two or three of the Russians. His son Mark had a good shot at one, and I think he just sparked his club right now, and we'll see if they follow on to finish the check. Lacroix wins the faceoff for Team Canada. The captain, Pat Stable, and now Johnny McKenzie. McKenzie across to Bobby Hall. Lacroix leaves it for Hall at center right. For McKenzie, broken up. Lacroix lost it finally. The Soviets in the center right area with Hall to Lacroix. Closing in. A pass right in front. Oh, McKenzie relay went wide. Lacroix on the far side in front for Johnny McKenzie. Could not get to it. McKenzie for Bobby Hall. Tipped away from Hall. The Soviets come out two on two. Lebedev, Chadron. Now Yakushev and Hull breaks that play out. This is Sagankov, number seven for the USSR. McKenzie gets a piece of him. The pass to Yakushev. Lebedev shooting. Cheevers with a save. Jerry Cheevers, some steady work in the early minutes of game four. They've played two and a half minutes now. Here's Lebedev's shot and Cheevers' save. Just a great two-on-one situation. Look at how the Russians here form a two-on-one. A good shot and a good save. There was lots of room for that to go in. They challenge it. Paul Schmier in trouble in front of his goal. Finally gets it in behind. The Soviets still have it, though. Still inside that blue line. Bodanov, number 24, with it. Maltsev cruising in there. Can't get the pass to him. Back comes number 19, Paul Henderson. With Walton. Long shot over top. Bouncing out for Walton. Tipped back to the point. And out to center ice for Paul Schmier. He's checked by Anison, number 22. Anison wins it, waiting for a pass out. Two Cheevers around the back of the goal. The Soviets, Maltsev, to Bodanov, to Anison. He fans once, second chance. Over to Maltsev, all around the goal, and Cheevers hangs on. Soviets being kept off balance this time. Team Canada getting pieces of them, but it's been all USSR inside the Team Canada blue line. Just watch here the number of times that Team Canada players are fishing for the puck, and the Russians continually come up with it. we just not taken the man. We're blocking the shot, and finally Cheevers does come up with the loose puck. All right, from the faceoff, this is Paul Schmier. Relay from Henderson. Too far for Mike Walton. Number two is Alexander Gusev, perhaps the Soviet's top defenseman. To Harlemo. Schmier against Harlemo. The puck comes to Rick Smith, number 17, but held in by Vasiliev, number six. Right point. Winding up. He scores! Screened all the way was Jerry Cheevers on that goal from the point by Vasiliev. Right 
right here, you'll see the Canadian player go out, anticipate a pass. Nobody goes near him. He just slides it right along the ice, and it goes underneath Cheever's pass. I think he was pretty well screened on that. With the score, the Soviets won and Canada nothing. This is game four from Vancouver. This is the hindsight mirror. No hands needed. It stays in any position for viewing the back, sides, and even the top of your head. And it's great for close-ups. The whole family will love hindsight. Hindsight is always handy, but never in the way. It folds neatly against your wall. You'll love it. Ask for hindsight. Only $7.77 in decorator colors. Available at leading department stores. That Soviet goal at 334 scored by Vasiliev from Harlamov. And here's the faceoff. The Soviets again pour it inside the Team Canada blue line. Tipped by Bernier back to the Soviet zone. Now a two on two break here is Harlamov against J.C. Tremblay. Closing in, a save, rebound. Cleared off to the far side by Marty Howe. Back comes Serge Bernier with Rejan Hull. Drop pass to Hull and Bernier fell in front of him. They lost the chance in the corner. Harlamov as the Soviets come back. At the Team Canada blue line with Mihailov inside. Behind the goal, centers it out in front. Oh, and Cheever's just got the stick on it as the puck lazily rolled toward the post. An interesting aspect of the Russians' attack. You can watch it right here. Now look, at they pass the puck out to the side, they go in. Simon, look at 13. He's reading the play already. In, in Canadian hockey, we more or less go around behind the net and pass out from the other side. But they do this time and time again and read each other moves so well. Shadrin on the faceoff. Pat Stapleton comes up with it. Moving up the right side for Team Canada. Center ice area. Relay for Gordy Howe. Howe shoots. He scores. A great pass. But look at the burst of speed. He gets this pass here. Where does he put it? Right upstairs. Look how far Trecek was out. Yet he tucked it in up in high. Now watch the Watch big number nine explode when he gets this pass. Look at him. Right here, two strides, puts his body in front of the check and throws it high. Beautiful, beautiful goal. Gordy Howe wakes it one all at the 420 mark of period one. And now, in behind the goal is Ricky Lee. For Ralph Backstrom and now to pass Fable and a brilliant goal by number nine. Luchenko ahead of center ice for Shadrin with Lebedev and Yakushev. The pass behind Shadrin. Falling on the play. Now they carry on as Team Canada is holding back, waiting for the Soviets to attack inside the blue line. Down the left board, taken down was number 11, Lebedev. Now Stapleton breaks up. On the right side with Marty Howe, Gordy trailing in behind. They finally call it offside pass. He'll bring it back inside the Team Canada line. He assists to number 12, Pat Stapleton. And to number 14, Ralph Backstrom. The time, 4.20. 4.20 the time. Gordy Howe from Stapleton and Backstrom. And Howe is cut above the eye. He's being treated now to Team Canada bench. Up the right for Johnny McKenzie to Andre Lacroix. And back to McKenzie in a one-all game. Barely five minutes old here in Vancouver. Here is Mostel. Far side for Anissim. There's going to be a delayed penalty here. In the corner, Paul Schmier ties it up. And the penalty appears to be against Team Canada. The first penalty of game four. They got five in a row. It's Johnny McKenzie. Five in a row in Winnipeg before one was called against the Soviets on Saturday. And that was a double penalty when it came. Well, certainly in this instance, I would think Team Canada got away with three borderline infractions, and, and that one there was just so blatant that the referee had to call it. Referee is Waldo Sepecki of Poland. Time of the penalty was 5:24 against Johnny McKenzie of Team Canada, and the Soviet power play goes into action. Stapleton being watched by Bodanov in behind the goal, swings away from two Soviet players, now a third and down the ice. 
Brett Jack, the brilliant Soviet goaltender, leads it to Vladimir Luchenko. Ahead now to Alexander Maltsev. Bodanov. Lost to throw, gets it again, but it's offside because he trapped an Easton on the right wing. They'll face off outside the team Canada Blue Line. Score one all, and here's Gordy Howe. You see that slight cut above the eye, a souvenir from a Soviet stick, which came just after he scored that equalizing goal. Valerie Harlemo with Petrov and Mihailov inside the line. Left point for Gusev. His shot almost deflected, but he goes wide. Relay in front. They score to make it two to one. A lightning fast pass out, and Mihailov got his stick on it, I believe, to put it in and send the Soviets on top again. Let's watch. Well, here, just a real alert play. J.C. goes into the corner. Pat doesn't move across quick enough, and it's in the net. Number 13, Boris Here Mihailov. Here it comes again. You just can't give the Russians that much room. Soviet players allowed to remain on their feet in front of that goal, and it's costing Team Canada. Time 5.59. 5.59, Mihailov from Petrov. 2-1, to one, USSR now. Team Canada still having difficulty inside their blue line, as they did in Winnipeg on Saturday. The Soviets have the edge and score and play at this point. Early in period one of game four. Walton's soft shot going to Kretschek's doorstep. Now this is Vasilia being hounded there by Bruce McGregor. They tie up in the corner. The puck comes loose back for Paul Schmier. Schmier, deflection by McGregor. Kretschek had to move fast on that one. Vasiliev against Paul Henderson. Now Petrov joins in. There'll be a face-off. Thirteen twenty-five to play here in period one. The USSR leading Team Canada two to one in Vancouver. Anderson, Walton, McGregor out there. Walton won it. Down went Henderson. Back comes Yakushev. One on two. He's alone right now, waiting for help from Shadrin. Works it inside the blue line. Right corner taken out by Paul Schmier. Round to the open side. Lebedev was bumped. Luchenko's pass to Yakushev, broken up by Schmier. He's played well in this series, Paul Schmier, of the Cleveland Crusaders. And down the ice it goes behind Kutchak. Luchenko. Lebedev. Yakushev lost his helmet and the puck. Marty Howe missed the check on Lebedev. Back from the Canadian. Mike Walton inside the line. It is offside. On the perfect setup to Frank Mahovlich, offside. Crowd here, not very happy about the call. Let's try to catch it. You watch right here, you'll find a good pass here to Mahovlich. He would have been home free, just a little bit behind him. It was an offside call, but gee whiz, I don't think it was. Unless it was Mahovlich out of the range of our camera on that shot, but it was awfully close between the first two players going in. Now here is a Neeson for the Soviet Union. Goes back to the stick of the big part of the mouth. Great shot there. Quick shot. Deflected wide. Mahavlich. Oh, Skate it off the puck. Gets it again. Shoot. Rebound from Ho. Right in front of Petschak. Holds it. Vladislav Here, Here's a great hockey player, Yekashev, but this is the only way to take him out. Paul Schmier gets in front of him and just makes a real good check. If you can keep on the offensive side of that, fella, you have a chance, but boy, some hockey player. They weren't doing that on Saturday. Mahavlich lost the chance. The Soviets tip it out to center ice. This is Anissa number 22 with Maltsev trailing a backhand shot stopped by Cheevers, and he'll hold it as number 10, Maltsev, the Soviet veteran, came cruising in. Of the nine shots the Soviets have taken in the direction of the Team Canada goal, seven have been on the net, and two have gone in. They lead two to one with 12-15 to play here in the opening period as Serge Bernier skates to the bench. Line change with Backstrom now centering. Gordy Howe and Markow. This is Markow, number 11. 
against the high loud. Petrov wins the puck. Stapleton checks in. Stapleton starting out the right side. A pass to Ricky Lee. Gets it ahead to Gordy Howe. Canada's only goal scorer so far in the game. But now it is Petrov and a piece of him taken by Mark Howe. Here's Backstrom with Gordy Howe. Swings in behind the Soviet goal. Written out there by number two, Gusev. Gusev played him well. Tip to the other corner now. The Soviets under pressure at this point. Here's Ricky Lee. Shoots to the other corner. Gusev there. Ahead to Petrov. And finally the Soviets get it out to the Team Canada Blue Line. 11 minutes and 25 seconds to play in the first period. 2-1 for the Soviet Union. Backstrom fast. Did not reach number 11. Mark Howe. Harlamov almost gave it away to Backstrom in there. The Soviets recover. Backstrom being interfered with. There's no penalty on the play. Play goes right on. Mihailov to Vasiliev. He's bumped, and they lose the puck. Back to center ice again. Gordy Howe was taken down by Vasiliev. There's a whistle, and I believe a offside call is all it is. Has to be a penalty indication from the Polish referee, Waldo Stepecki. But it's offside. The goal scorers, Vasiliev and Mihailov for the USSR and Gordy Howe for Canada. There it is, 2-1 to one for the Soviets. Number seven, Gennady Sagankov shoots it down the ice. This should be icing. It is. took those two penalties that hurt Team Canada in the first game has played extremely well ever since. And a starter in all four games. Shadron on the faceoff. Lost it. Shot goes wide. McKenzie alone on the right side. Passing it across the goal mouth. Nobody there. And now Lebedev golfs it out to center right. Rick Smith number 17 to McKenzie. Now Schmier into the slot for the quad. He could not hang on. Lebedev goes off Yakushev skate. Finally, Schmier takes over. Number 18, to Rick Smith, his defense partner. Soviets again, four checking very, very well here in game four. Oh, lost balance down the left side. Now Lebedev, Team Canada blue line, inside with Gatlin, checked there by Schmier. He leaves it for number 16, Bobby Hull. To McKenzie. Schmier dumps it across for McKenzie, picked off by Yakushev. Play unsettled now in the center ice section of the Vancouver Pacific Coliseum. 2-1 for the Soviet Union. Smith offside, two lines, the pass to Bobby Hull. The leading point getters in this series for Canada, Hull and McCois with five each. For the USSR, Yakushev and Petrov with four apiece. 9.54 remaining in period one. Bobby Hull at the Team Canada bench as they send out the Mike Watson line with Henderson on his left and McGregor on his right. Defense fair, Howe and Tremblay. Anison with Maltsev and Volonov for the USSR. Center ice pass broken up by Paul Henderson. Long wing comes down, shoots, and Kretschak just got a piece of that one. Maltsev, open wing pass. Catching up now is Bodanov. They did not call the outside pass. Bodanov around behind the Team Canada goal. In front for Maltsev. He was checked by the stick of Jerry Cheever. Maltsev, back on the left point for Luchenko. Winding over the flexion just went wide from Maltsev. Pressure again by the Soviet Union inside the Team Canada goal. Bodanov to an Anissa. Finally, McGregor comes up with it. Gets out to center ice for the pass to Mike Walton. Walton scoops it down, gets away from Luchenko. Kuznets off, number 12. Met hard there in the corner by Paul Henderson, and he'll face off as they freeze the puck. 8.59 to play here in period one. What life Henderson gave to Team Canada Saturday when they trailed so badly, he scored those two fast goals, and just for a moment, we thought they might come back. The Soviets won at 8-5 and lead now in game four, 2-1. With less than nine to play in the opening period. Ricky Lee now pairs with Pat Sable and back to Frank Mahovlich. Shot goes wide. Gusev 
against Rishan Poole. Bernier goes in after it. They bump there. Harlema against Poole. Poole wins the puck. Then it was checked from behind by Harlema. Good two-way player. This Valerie Harlema off number 17. Bernier feeds it back to Ricky Lee. Then up to Rejan Hool and to Bernier. At the Soviet line against Gusev. Takes a swat at him. Goes into the corner. Centers it back. Staple and shot is blocked. Here's a break. Cheevers gets back into his net in a hurry. Offside pass is called on the pass to Harlamov as Cheevers is a good 25 feet out of the team panel of the net as the break came back down ice. With the score, the USSR 2 and Canada 1. This is game four from Vancouver. Believe me, when we light the Olympic torch on this site in 1976, everyone will share in Canada's pride. You and I can help participate in Canada's first Olympic Games and make them a great success by buying these beautiful sterling silver Olympic coins. Seven sets of four coins each are being issued. Series two is available now. Order your coins today. The minting is limited. Olympic coins are available at banks, financial institutions, and authorized coin distributors. Gusev got a penalty on this play against Bernier for slashing. There it is. And the initial play, John, uh, was Bernier gave him a pretty good uh, punch in the shoulder to instigate it out. That's the first Soviet penalty of the game. The Team Canada power play as Bernier, Mahovlich and Hull, Bobby Hull, and Paul Schmier. Hull moves it up. Bernier did not quite stay onside the officials' rule. They'll face off outside the Soviet line. No doubt that Bobby Hull, number 16, which, by the way, is his original number in pro hockey, is the offensive leader, the overall leader of Team Canada 74. Batted back to Schmier and over to Bobby Hull. Now Schmier with Hull inside the line. Hull getting away from Petrov, then lost his balance. It's chopped back to center ice for the Soviet. Bobby Hull to Frank Mahovlich. Around to Cilia. Closing into the pass for Hull behind him. He couldn't take it. And the Soviets clear down to Jerry Cheever. A minute and 20 seconds left in Gusev's penalty. Here's Bernier. For Hull. Tried to swing it out. Couldn't get it past Vasilia. So far, the power play is struggling. Here's Schmier. Winding up for the shot wide. Rejan Hull. Bobby Hull. Goal! Hull is the fella here. Just great persistence. He beat the Soviet team to the puck in the corner. Laid it right on Bobby Hull's stick. Now watch Hull. Uh, this is the second time he brought it out of the corner. And there's no way they're going to allow Bobby Hull to stand free out there and get that shot away, or they're going to be in trouble. Scored by number 16, Bobby Hull. That is Hull's fourth is goal of the series. Mahavlitz got the assist. The time is 12.45 of period one. It's two all, and now here's Ralph Backstrom waiting for his chance. Gets it. Rebound. All around the goal. And finally cleared by number 19, Shadrin to Yakushev. right side for Lebedev. Shadrin back to Sagankov. Sagankov with Yakushev. Right side, and he couldn't get the pass away of a check by Howe. Chadron to an open wing. Team Canada finally recovers with J.C. Tremblay. Out for Gordie Howe. He lost it to Yakushev. Yakushev, a check from Backstrom. It gets ahead to Lebedev. Hard check there from Marty Howe. And it goes out to center right. Six minutes, 15 seconds to play in the first period. It is two all. Number 19 is Chadron. Down he goes against Markov. And Sagankov has it. Zagankov, Provotskov, away from Howe. Lost the puck to Tromblay in behind the goal. Tromblay feeds it for Johnny McKenzie. Ahead for Andre Lacroix. McKenzie bumping there with Yakushev. 
Now McKenzie again. Left side for Bobby Howe. Getting set. Shooting. Oh, and he went wide. Blistering drive from number 16, Howe. Stapleton to Bobby Howe again. Goal! Just a great pass to Howe, cutting in behind the defense, and look again where he put it. You got Trichick coming out, down, but he popped it into the top left-hand corner. Now look at this has been set up by the Howe. The last five minutes, the Howe's have been just taking dead bad aim at every white sweater out there, Mark in particular, and Marty back in defense. Time and time again, they've taken them. That is Bobby Howe's second goal in the past minute and six seconds is fifth of the series and Team Canada leads 3-2. Right now Bobby Howell has got a lot of admirers. He has his his goal. Scored by number 16 Bobby Howell. From the face off back inside that Soviet is zone. Number 12, the Russians Stapleton. appear unsettled now. Stapleton gets the assist. 15-11 is the time. Number nine is Alexander Boltskov inside the Team Canada blue line. Being watched there by Henderson, who clears. About four and a half minutes to play in the first period. 3-2 for Canada. Kuznetsov back to Lachenko. Now to Boltskov. To Ann Eason. Inside the line from Maltsev. Maltsev closing in. A backhand shot. The rebound comes out. Recovered by Mike Walton. Boston to Paul Henderson. On the rookie lead. Down the right board. Lee against Luchenko. Centers it. Batted by Trechak. Still loose for McGregor. Can't control the puck. Finally checked by Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov across to Anison. Canadian line. Maltsev cruising. Shot partially blocked. Goes in behind. Cheevers has it. Face off with 339 to play in the first period. John, if Team Canada can get everybody on the ice, just taking the man and taking the man, you begin to see chinks in the Russian armor. They're looking, they're fumbling the puck, and they're not making the great passing plays without first taking a look. Face-off coming up. Our game recorder says Canada's won 17 of the 21 face-offs so far. Make it 18. Bernier wins the draw there. The Soviets keep it inside the line. The high loft, waiting, getting it back to Petrov. He shoots the pressure by Jerry Peters in behind. Got his stick on it. Now on the right board, Rejan Houle being challenged by Petrov. Houle at center right. Lost to Petrov. Swings inside the team Canada line. Leaving it for Harlema. Harlema against Frank Mahavlich, and they'll tie it up. Before anyone jumps on that official, I just think he's calling a great game. He's letting them play hockey. He's letting a lot of borderline things go on both sides, and he's not spoiling a whale of a first period. By far the best we've had. Great end to end action here in the Vancouver Pacific Coliseum. Here is Petrov shooting it into the crowd. Three minutes and two seconds left on the clock. Billy Harris, who's done just a tremendous job of putting this team together, his philosophy, his approach, his entire dedication to the project are largely responsible for the way the series stands now at a game each with a tie. Now here is Rick Smith out to the big end across to Hull inside the Soviet zone. Rejan Hull stopping in front. Mahavlich goal! And it's 4 2. Watch this great play by Hull. He stopped and waited. Didn't panic. By Craig coming in and looking. Upstairs. That's the key again. A great play by Hull. His second outstanding play. Craig complete. That's a Mohammed goal all the way. Well, it's been superstar night in Vancouver. Two by Hull, one by Howe, and now one by Frank Mohammed. Is it to number five, Rajon Hull? And number 21, Serge Bernier. Hull and 
Bernier get the assist. That time is 17-10. And Killian Watt and Team Canada leads the USSR national team 4-2 here in Vancouver. Yakushev. Bumped by Backstrom. Chadrin takes over. Right side relay broken up for Lebedev. Gordy Howe with Backstrom and Mark Howe on the ice. Howe runs into Lebedev and Backstrom has it. Clears to Gordy Howe. Howe one on two inside the line. Lost it. Turns Yakushev around. Gets it again. There's an outside call. They'll face off outside the blue line. I think you just have to watch these, Howe. Time and time again, there are the fellas, there's the, the grandmaster, but he's got two sons out there that are showing the older fellas how to take the man. They might be as good as hockey players as that gentleman right there. Yakushev paid the price of the check from how he lift off the Soviet bench. He could consider himself lucky he was able to lift off. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, Gordy, how, how are you? are probably very right. 2.17 left of the opening period. Canada leads 4-2. to two. What a comeback. Twice behind and now ahead by a pair of goals. 2.17 on the clock as Bobby Howell confers with the timekeeper. There it is. From the face off the claw breaks in. Across the hall, hat trick! They're going crazy in Vancouver. And I'm sure across the country, too. You gotta watch this. Just dead center pass by Lacroix. Perfect. But watch the speed in which Bobby Hull gets it away. Just on the toe of the stick. Now watch Lacroix hang out of it. He's looking for Hull. Look at that little slap shot. And where does it go? Hey, it took us three games to learn something. But oh, just perfect. Watch it again. On and up. Bobby Howe kept the puck in his first two, international hat trick all in the first Andre period. Lacroix gets the assist. 1749. Puck goes Lacroix. into the crowd. There'll be a faceoff. How about that for a first period for number 16? <laughs> the period still belongs to the Howes. I think they swung it around in one shift. Just two grand performances by probably the biggest names in hockey today, the Hulls in the house. That guy Lacroix could be named the number one star of any of these games, Howie, the way he's played. Down the right side, Mihailov inside the Team Canada line. Tries to get a pass to Petrov, it's broken up. Lacroix chasing against Gusev with McKenzie. Gusev backs up on the stick of Bobby Hull. Now to Ricky Lee. Lee holds it against the board. Gives it away to Harlemov. Harlemov one on two, shooting wide. Vasiliev is back to center ice with about a minute 44. The clock is stopped right now. And it stops officially on that whistle. They'll bring it back to center ice. McKenzie fencing in there with a Soviet player. Doug Robb from Bolton, Ontario, Valentin Nikolaev of Russia and Waldo Sapecki of Poland, the officials in this game. As McKenzie complains very vigorously about the actions of a Soviet player out there. Billy Harris promptly makes a change. They come to the bench. McKenzie might have been nicked on that play with a stick. That's probably what he was complaining about. 44 seconds the clock shows now. They've had some trouble with it, so we'll tell you that's strictly unofficial. 128. So ignore that. We're told there's a minute and 28 left now. 5-2 for Canada. First period. Schmier plays it down behind the Soviet goal. Gusev all the way down the ice. They'll be called for icing. If not mistaken, the score of the game in Vancouver in 72 was 5-2 for the Soviets. It is now 5-2 for Team Canada. And the Vancouver fans, believe me, have had nothing to boo about tonight. As they did in 1972 when the Canadians lost here quite decisively. Mike Walton on the faceoff. 
with McGregor and Henderson. Henderson could not gain control. It's waddled ahead to center ice. Now Schmier flips a backhander, rolls to the Soviet corner for Gusev. Gusev around the boards for Vasiliev. Ahead on the right side. This is number 16, Petrov. The long drive is wide. A minute left now in period one. Around behind Jerry Sheevers. Petrov and Schmier bumping there. Henderson will help out. They'll force a face off. Fifty seconds, we're told, of official playing time remaining in the opening period. Boris Kulagin, who always wears a similar expression to that, has good reason to look somber right now. His team has fallen three goals behind, having twice taken the lead here in the opening period. They went ahead at 3.34. Canada tied it up with Howe's goal at 4.20. They went ahead at 5.59. Hull tied that at 12.45, then banged in two more. Mahavlic got one. It is 5-2 for Team Canada. What an exciting first period performance. Shadrin will take the face off against Pat Stapleton. It'll be Bernier. He slides in there now. Bernier wins it. To Stapleton, look out! Loose around the goal. Cleared finally on the far boards for Mahavlic. In behind, too far for Stapleton. He's checked there by Shedrin. They bump for it. Back to the other side. Casey Trombley golfs it, and Sagankov cannot hold on. Clock moving now. Less than 30 seconds to play in period one. Here is Pat Stapleton beating Frank Mahavlik with Rejan Hole. He was checked by Lebedev. Poole back to Stapleton. Now Trombley, number three. Banks it off the boards at center ice. Renuchenko has it. Ten seconds left now in the first period. Shadrin can't get around Stapleton. Again, Kauf at center ice. Bumped by Hull. Puck goes to Yakushev. That's it. First period's over. And an exciting 20 minutes of international hockey. After the first period, the score is Canada 5 and the Soviets 2. This is game four from Vancouver. Jack Divide is president of the Canadian Amateur Hockey Association, and Jack, being from Belleville, I would think that a lot of people uh, in your hometown are enjoying this game every bit as much as the people in Vancouver. Well, they sure are, Bill. With uh, Bobby Hull coming through with three first period goals, I'm sure they're all uh, pretty elated. It's a pretty remarkable first period. I thought that uh, while Howe or Hull was the scoring star in the period, that Gordy Howe really turned the period around when he came out hitting on that first or second shift. He doesn't look like a 46-year-old man out there this afternoon. Jack, about the CAHA itself, uh, you've got a big series coming up with the juniors, and the junior hockey's always been exciting, and it could match this in terms of excitement. Well, I think one of the most exciting tournaments ever to be held in Canada will be in Winnipeg from uh, December 26th till January 5th when we have the CCM Invitational Junior International Tournament with teams from the Soviet, Czechoslovakia, Finland, Sweden, the United States, and Canada. Canada will be represented by the Western Canada Hockey League All-Stars. Uh, be just a tremendous series. Okay, tell us a little more about the series in terms of how it uh, was brought together by the CAHA. Well, we went to Leningrad last Christmas with the Peterborough Peaks. They represented Canada. And it was just such an outstanding tournament. Uh, going down to the final day, the 15th game of the tournament, if Peterborough had uh, won, they'd have won it all. If they'd have tied, they'd have finished second, and losing, they finished third. That's just how exciting and how close it was. And uh, we were interested. We thought the Canadian fans would like to see something like that, and we talked to the people, and they're coming here this winter. Well, if the CAHA has a mandate in Canada, it's to bring international hockey back to this country, and I think you've certainly done that in fine style. Well, we're working on it, Bill. We're working on it. Jack, I know you're looking forward to the second period. Uh, do you think that the Canadian team can maintain that pace? I think so. I think so. They're going great today. Okay, we're looking forward to it, and as you can see, so are the fans here at the Pacific Coliseum in Vancouver. So let's go upstairs to Don Chevrier. Thank you, Bill. And uh, as Howie said, you can't really fault Vladislav Trechak for the five goals that got by him. Brilliant shots from brilliant, experienced hockey players. Five of them giving Canada a 5-2 to two lead. Bobby Hull got the hat trick in the opening period. Gordy Howe and Frank Mahavlich added the singles. The Soviet Union has outshot Canada 12 to 11 in the opening period, but that's small consolation for Soviet coach Boris Kulagin. 
The only emotion he really displayed during the entire series was a bit of a chewing out he gave his players when Team Canada began to come back from that huge deficit Saturday afternoon in Winnipeg. He was quite animated and quite flushed at that time and angered. Now uh, he looks like a very concerned man, understandably. The man he can thank for that feeling is number 16, Bobby Hall, with just a superb opening period performance against the national champions of the USSR, the world amateur champions, and the reigning Olympic hockey champions. And Bobby Hall now has scored six goals in the series. He has two assists for a total of eight points, and of course, has those three picture goals tonight at the Pacific Coliseum here in Vancouver. To begin the third period, Andre Lacroix will have Hull on his left and McKenzie on his right. Petro for the USSR with Mihailov on the right wing, Harlamov on the left wing. Gusev plays it ahead to Petrov as we begin the second period. Mihailov trying to lead pass for Harlamov, broken up. Gets it again to Petro. Play it back to Gusev. Mihailov, Harlamov. Inside the blue line, off the left board. Left for Gusev. His shot deflected. Cheevers just saw that in time. Lacroix comes out to break it up and send Team Canada back. Too far for McKenzie, just over his stick. Into the corner. Bobby Hall has it. No icing on the play. Mihailov on the board. Gets it out to Gusev. Now Harlemar. Being watched by Howe. Marty Howe. And now J.C. Trombley, his defense partner, takes over. In the early seconds of period two, Bobby Hall, the claw. The claw against Vasiliev could not hang on to it. Now Petrov is bumped and sent flying by Bobby Hall as the Russians break out of their zone. Over the Team Canada line, Mihailov with Harlem off in front. Our Peter stick away out of his goal. Way out almost the blue line. He backhands it the length of the ice. Now Gusev to Vasiliev. He is one of the two Soviet goals. Long shot, handled easily by Cheaters to Frank Mahavlich. Mahavlich in a slot for Rizan Hul, and now up to third Bernier. That's the Soviet line. Bernier got turned around by number five, Yuri Lyapkin. Stapleton for Mahavlich. Did not control it at the blue line, watching for an offside. Shadrin. He's checked by Mahavlin. Yakushev carries on. Pumped by Bernier. The puck goes to Pat Stapleton. Now Frank Mahavlin against Lyapkin. Drop pass for Hull. Oh, and a save off the pads of Kretjak. Back come the Soviets at center. Lebedev swings inside the line. Knocked off balance. Lee beats Bernier. Now Mahavlin left side. Too far for him. At the center ice for number 11, Levidev. Back checking by Bernier. Clubs Bernier as they go down the boards. No penalty on the play. Lee bump there. It's again top against Bernier. And Bernier is getting a lot of the physical action right now early in period two. Both teams begin to change on the go. Backstrom's out there now. This is Lyapkin at the Team Canada line. Off to the right board. Number 15, the great Alexander Yakushev being watched in there by Ralph Baxter. Out to Yakushev, his quick shot is handled off the net by Jerry Cheever. Here's what Team Canada... Here's what Team Canada's doing so well. Look at Bernier take Yakushev off the puck and keep himself between them and the net. This is the whole key to, to play in the Russian hockey game. From the face-off, a shot directly on Jerry Cheevers from the point. Kuznetsov over to Lachenko. Loose in front. Picked up finally by Backstrom ahead to number 11. Howe down the left side. A shot goes around behind. Gordy Howe on the right boards with it now. Play goes out of Soviet state. Here's a break for the Soviet. Maltsev in the clear. Check. Drops it back. And it was wide of the goal from Bodanov. End-to-end -end action now. Bodanov, number 24. Back to number three, Luchenko. Bodanov again. Center right, and Eason playing without a helmet now, and Eason getting set. His shot deflected wide by Paul Schmier. Battled around the backboards by Cheever. 
Out come the Canadians with Ralph Baxter. Baxter on high. Baxter check. Baxter closing in. Batted away finally. And the Soviets come back. Tremendous action here. Over the blue line. Around the check goes Bodanov. Maltsev fell. The puck comes back to center right. Delayed penalty to the Canadians coming up here. Number 12, Kuznetsov with it. Kretschak out of the goal. Kuznetsov was closed line by Rick Smith, but there's going to be a Canadian penalty. With the score, Canada 5 and the Soviets 2. This is game four from Vancouver. KTEL presents the Irish Rover Special. 20 super hits specially selected from their TV show. Men, come men, we'll do the best we can. And their hair hung over her shoulder, tied up with a black velvet band. Queen alligators and long necks. Truly international stars, the Irish Rovers bring the warmth of the Irish into your home. Get the Irish Rover special, $4.99. Paper cassette, $6.99. Number 18, Paul Schmier has drawn a roughing penalty at the 4.08 mark of the second period. So the Soviet power play is on the ice now, centered by Petrov, Harlamov, Mihailov. Vasiliev on the right point. On the left side is Gusev. And now broken up by number 12, Pat Stapleton. At the Soviet blue line. Gets away from the check from Petrov. Being watched there by Gusev in the corner. Finally gives it up to number two, Gusev. For Harlamov. Soviets breaking back now. Right side, Harlamov. Being watched by McGregor. Did a great job. Took him right off that puck. And it's clear down the ice and over the boards for a face-off. Well, McGregor certainly did come back. I was very, very surprised to see him go stride for stride and even gain on Harlamov. That Harlamov can fly. And he did finish the check. Howie, can you believe a team with an average age of 30, a player as old as 46, can skate as well as this team skating? It's very, very hard to believe that they just performed so well when they had to. From the point, that rolling shot was stopped by number three, J.C. Tremblay. The Soviets must wait now to get onside as Tremblay moves it out. In the penalty, a minute and 20 seconds remaining for Paul Schmier's roughing sentence as Canada shoots it down the ice to Tretchev. Number two, Alexander Gusev. Across to Petrov. Right side. With Mihailov inside the line, and Harlemo keeps it back for Gusev. His shot is blocked by Cheevers. He was screened, but he got a piece of a puck. Vasiliev now winding up. That was blocked. Again, Jerry Cheevers. Still inside that Canadian zone. Pushing around the Canadian goal. A shot by Gusev is blocked by the defense. Staples goes into the corner after it. It is picked up finally and shot down the ice by Bruce McGregor. 40 seconds left. In the penalty. Pass off the stick of Gusev. Played back to Stapleton now by J.C. Tremblay. Tremblay killing time. Backing up. Swings away from Alexander Yakushev. And beats Ralph Baxter. And Baxter will go back. And kill more time. Only 18 seconds left now on the penalty. Stapleton lobs it down the ice on Kretschak. Now only 10 seconds remain on the Canadian penalty. Soviets disorganized with the power play. Mark Howe along the boards brings the puck from Vasiliev. Hangs on to it. Now Tremblay, the penalty is over. The Canadians have killed the time. The pass down the ice too far for Schmier. With the penalty expired, they're called for icing. But what a great job, Howie, of killing it off. That young Howe is something else again. He's just so cool under fire. He outfought three Russians for the puck over on the blue line. But I think I've noticed a change in the Russian power play. So many times Canadians have said, why don't they shoot the puck when they get it to the point? Obviously, we've taken away center right. We're bunching closer together. And Gusev and Cecilia have had five or six shots there. And Cheevers really had to be good. But our fellows were cleaning house in front of the net to give them a chance to see it. They scored three in this series from that point. Now a quick shot on goal from Chadwin for Sandal. Paul Schmier on the ice. Works the right side. Swings away from Chadwin. Center ice pass for Bobby Hall. Over offside as the claw was tied up as he crossed the blue line just by a step. Andre Lacroix. He is the second leading scorer in this series with six points. He set up five goals 
and he scored one and three. But why with McKenzie and Bobby Hall? Shadrian has it for the Soviets across to Lebedev. Hall breaks that up, gives the puck to Paul Schmier, number 18. Out for Lyapkin. Lyapkin leads it there at the Canadian line. A good body check by McKenzie and Shadrian, and Paul Schmier takes over in the corner. Around past Lebedev to Bobby Hall, ahead to Andre Lacroix. Here's two on one. McKenzie takes the right side pass. That's the broken up by Lyapkin. One defenseman back. He stops the play. But the Soviets are not pressing like they were in the first half of the first period. The Afghan ahead for Yakushev gave the puck to Bobby Hall. He shoots off the leg of Zagankov, number seven. The Afghan lost to Johnny McKenzie. Out to Hall, screenshot, Foster. Kretschak did not see it. Deflected off his chest, fly to the goal. Here's Yakushev, left side for Lebedev and Rick Smith. Pumps it back to center right. Down the board, Bobby Hull swings over now to his proper wing with the claw. McKenzie on the right side for Hull. Broken up at number 10, Malsev has it. Inside the line, Malsev shooting. Stopped by Cheevers, the rebound for Smith. Malsev ties him up. There'll be a face-off with eight minutes gone in period two. Ed Trecek was very, very lucky there. The shot hit the defenseman and went up in the air and hit him on the head. He doesn't, sure he didn't see it, Don. No idea where it was until he filled it. Watch that McKenzie finish the check. Time and time again, he takes out the Russian players. 5-2 is the score for Team Canada. All the scoring so far in the opening period. And he stood on the draw. It's back for two nets off. That shot was blocked. And here comes Frank Mahovlich streaking down the left side with Rejan who Could not get the pass to him. Now Malsev. Beats Bodenov on the left side. Reaches the Canadian line. Drop pass for Harlemo. Over to number 10, Malsev. He could not control the bouncing puck. Here's a break for Bernier with Mahavlic cruising in. Over to Frank Mahavlic over his stick. Mahavlic centers it out. Bounces in front of the Soviet goal. And they clear it on the ice. Fast breaking action both ways here in the second period. Rajan Hul, number five. Kuznetsov, number 12, gets it out. And J.C. Tromblay will chase it down the ice. Not far enough for icing. Duma Havlitz battled away by Kuznetsov to vote it off. He was tied up effectively by number 10, Marty High. On the boards for Rejan Hul and out to center ice. 11 minutes to play in the second period. 5-2, Team Canada in command. Hul to Tromblay. Bernier. Bernier lost the puck there. And it's covered up by Howe, and Bernier has it again. Serge Bernier starting out at the Soviet line. Down the boards around Luchenko. Centers it out, off the skate. Probably blocked by Luchenko. Back come the Russians. Harlemo to Maltsev. Maltsev turned around. His shot deflected as he went too far. Probably. Lost it there to Harlemov for Maltsev, being watched by Marty Howe. Now Bernier has it bounced off him to J.C. Tromblay. Back down the ice it goes. This will not be far enough for icing. The puck dies before the red line. Vasiliev to Valeria Harlemov. Against Stapleton. One move too many. Lost the puck. They clear to center ice with now 10 minutes to play in the second period. 5-2 for Canada. Petrov's pass behind the high lock. The Soviet offense is organized now as Ralph Baxter breaks across the line. Shooting! High drive! Cut by the glove hand of Kretschek. It is warm tonight in the Pacific Coliseum. Warm outside of Vancouver, too. Reaching nearly 80 degrees again today. Beautiful, sunny weather on Canada's west coast. Right now, the heat is on the Soviet Union. Mihaila off back from stick, gets it over on the left side for Harlemov. Back to Mihaila. He's a veteran of several world championship Soviet teams. Vasiliev, number six with it now, and finally, finally, plays whistle down for an offside. Here's the, 
Here's just a great play here. Watch Mahavich outskate the Russian player. Look at that. The Russian player had two steps on him, and Bernier put the puck right out in front of him, just hopped over his stick. Great sign. Ralph Baxter, who turned 37 last week. The legs of the 17-year-old will handle the faceoff against number 19, Vladimir Shadrin. Back it comes to Pat Stapleton. Ricky Lee, away from number 15, Yakushev. Finally at the blue line, the Soviets are forced back into their zone. To Gankov, as Yakushev is checked by Gordy Howe and then bumped by Lebedev. The Soviets break inside the line. Shadrin got bumped off the puck. Lead pass for Gordy Howe against Lyapkin, and then Lyapkin got his stick on it just in time. Here is Yakushev. Shooting score! And it's five to three, and Alexander Yakushev, number 15, is now 12 goals the last 12 games against Canada. The big fella can really shoot him, I think, when it comes down to the final point when we ask somebody, watch this, it had to be tipped. Yes, it just hit a, a shin pad there, changed direction, and got by Cheevers. Let's the score, Canada five and the Soviets three. This is game four from Vancouver. Это банк, где люди составляют разницу. Yakushev makes it 5-3 at 11.04 from Yuri Lebedev. Off the faceoff. Here is Anisin at the line, right side, getting away from Schmier. He goes off a body, back to center right. Kuznetsov. Pass deflected on the board to Bruce McGregor. That Soviet goal, the only scoring play so far in the second period, a 5-3 game for the Canadians. Anisin to Lachenko, back to Anisin, away from Henderson, the pass to Maltev. Cheevers will come out and smother it. There'll be no further play. Several large banners here in Vancouver depicting the uh, famous chant and cheer of the 72 series. Niet, Niet, Soviet, Da, Da, Canada. Face off, Anisin, finally cleared by number 17, Smith, down the ice. The Canadians will be called for icing. We have eight minutes and 12 seconds of second period playing time remaining. 5-3 for Team Canada, 74. And after the second period, we'll be talking with Jim Patterson of the Vancouver Blazers about the WHA's new five-team Canadian division this coming season. Inside the Russian zone, Henderson taken down, no penalty called on the play as the fans move. Mihailov, number 13, to Harlamov. Circling, left the puck there for Mihailov. Down went McGregor against Harlamov. Petrov trying to center, does, loose in front. Oh, and the shot by Mihailov went wide. Spear right in front of his goal, spears it out to center ice. Soviets now begin to press again, getting a lift from that third goal moments ago by Yakushev. Petrov inside the line, a pass behind Harlamov, swept down the boards by Vasiliev to Mike Walton, to Bruce McGregor. McGregor now works ahead of center ice, can't reach Walton with a pass. Number two, Alexander Gusev had it, laid it down the ice for the Soviet team. Just over seven minutes to play in period two. Right side break now for Johnny McKenzie. Stepped inside the line against Gusev. Could not control the bouncing puck. And it's ahead at center for Petrov. Harlemo gets a shot wide. On the boards is Vladimir Petrov. Valerie Harlemo right in front. Cheever lost it. Rebound over top of the goal. The high line. Out to the point, trapped there by Kusev. His drive blocked by McKenzie. Here comes Mike Walton. Walton, oh, and a great save. And a long pass by number two, Alexander Kusev. 
Petroff against Rick Smith in the corner. Paul Schmier bats it off the boards and down the ice. Whistle is gone. Some stick swinging now from Petroff and from Rick Smith, but the officials move in to separate them. We continue to win faceoffs as Canadian team with 30 of 43 won so far tonight. Don, we've really stopped checking and we're going for that goal number six at the expense of the defense. We're continually getting three fellas caught and not coming back quite deep enough in our own end to take the man. They've given both penalties, Petrov 16 for the Soviets, and number 17 going in now is Rick Smith. The first offsetting penalties of the game with 6.25 to play in the second period. There's Smith. They got sticks up inside the Canadian zone just as that last play was ending. Team number 17, Rick Smith. Two minutes for interference. Interference is the call. 13.35 is the time. Well, they're playing five aside now. Bernier on the faceoff against Shadrin. Shadrin shoots it through the corner. Marty Howe to J.C. Tremblay being watched and then checked by Yakushev. Bernier jams in there for it. Along the boards, they whistle the play down. Yakushev has the period's only goal so far at 11.04 that has made the score 5-3 for Team Canada. They led 5-2 after one period. Shadrin with Sagankov, Yakushev, and Lyapkin. Bernier, Marty Howe, Frank Mahovlich, and J.C. Tremblay. The shot deflected off the plexiglass to Marty Howe. Howe did not clear. Shadrin got a shot at it. Howe gets a second chance. Finally, it is out to center ice. Sagankov to Yakushev. The big fellow winds up for the center ice area. Crossed the Canadian line, dropped the pass there. Shadrin was blocked out of the play by Mahovlich. And now J.C. Tremblay feeds Frank Mahovlich. Gives it back to Marty Howe. Down the left boards, Howe jams it inside the Soviet zone. 5.40 left in the period. 5-2 for Canada. Here is Yakushev to Shadrin. Inside the Canadian line, J.C. Tremblay gives it to Serge Bernier, and he goes in behind the goal. Marty Howe, a minute left in those penalties. J.C. Tremblay moves up. Over the Soviet line. Swings around Lutsenko, and then finally it's picked up. Bernier comes back to check. Soviets move ahead now with Yakushev. Zagankov taken down by Frank Mahovlich. Bernier in trouble against number five, Lyapkin, who wins the puck. 30 seconds to go on the penalty. Lyapkin across for Maltsev, closing in. Backhand drive, deflected wide of the goal. Forced in behind there. Great chance for the Soviets. Against the boards, his pass is able to the Serge Bernier. Ten seconds remaining in those penalties now. Frank Mahovlich with Bernier off his skate against Vasiliev. Looks for some help. Pass it across. Nobody inside the line to take the pass. And it's shot back to Pat Stable. The penalties are over now. Here's Rick Smith back on the ice. Inside the Soviet line. His pass intercepted the number 16, Petra. Petrov to Maltsev. Maltsev across the line, waiting, passes the shot by Petrov, goes wide. Four minutes to play in period two. Here comes Ralph Baxter with Gordy Howe. Baxter with Trent center right at the blue line. Closing in! Shot by Petrov. As Baxter got too close and Petrov had the angle cut down. Here is Maltsev. Turned around by Lee, and now Marty Howe comes up with it. Or Markow, number 11. Markow is center ice, lobs it inside the line. The number two, Gusev. Vasiliev to Petrov. Back into the corner. Gusev, in front of his own goal, was hounded by Howe and almost gave it away, but there's nobody there for the ball, the puck. Here's number 12, Stapleton now. Lacroix with him. Hard shot handled by Trechak. Kusev gets away from Lacroix with a pass to Petrov. Mihailov with him. Dumps it across. Nobody there. Bobby Hull clears it out. 
Three minutes and 15 seconds to play now in the second period. Vasiliev across to Mihaila. Now with the claw, they break it up, and here's Bobby Howe shooting. Ah, Kretschak, hard drive. Just got a piece on the short side. Here's a pass for Halimov. In the clear, breakaway. Halimov, oh! Peters came out and forced him off the puck. Still in there, Petrov shot over top. Off the glass, into the crowd. Just a great play by Jerry Cheevers to break out Harlemoff, who was home free. Just look at that pass right up through the center to Harlemoff, and in he goes. Cheevers gets the stick out as he goes down. He didn't get the puck, but he got enough of the escape so Harlemoff couldn't catch up with it. Just a great pass and a great play. Look at that save again. Harlemoff went into the corner and threw it out in front. He certainly has to be sharp. Canadian penalty coming up here to Rookie Lee. There is some fencing and shoving in front of the goal following that breakaway by Harlemoff, and Lee gets the penalty. He has the lead to number two, Rick Lee. Two minutes for Ruffin. Uh, done on the previous play, Frank Mahovlich was hanging around in center ice for the long pass, and he drew the two defensemen back so our forward could get it out. And this last play, Harlemanoff was just back and forth, back and forth out there. The defense would sneak a look at him. And the one time that the Russians picked up the puck and had the, a second to get rid of it, they just threw it out there like a bullet. It's pretty close to the offside, but this is just a great play. Well, the penalties now, that one to Lee came at 17.07 for roughing, makes it four penalties to two against Canada. The Soviets have had the advantage in manpower in all the games so far in terms of the number of penalties called. Now their power play is on the ice. Centered by number 22, the Yashislav Venison against Bruce McGregor, who wins the faceoff. Skates out to the line. It's held in there. Now J.C. Tromblay They clear it down the ice. Important penalty here, an important power play for the Russians, who if they score, will be only one down. But Henderson there with some great checking, takes it away and gives it a pass to Apleton. And it's down the ice for Kuznetsov, and Henderson has the puck inside the blue line. Eats it all the way back to his own line for J.C. Tromblay. Tromblay to Stapleton. Ahead for Henderson, broken up by Kuznetsov. Here's Anisin with Bodanov. Into the corner, Anisin turns. Centers it out, battled away by Henderson for Bruce McGregor. McGregor against Luchenko down the board. McGregor has the puck, written off into the corner. They tie up in there. McGregor still has it, gives it to Paul Henderson. Here's from the point. Pat Stapleton shot, blocked by Trechak. Mihailov, with less than a minute to go on the Canadian penalty to Ricky Lee, moves it up with a pass to Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov got turned around by Henderson and backs him. Here's Henderson now alone, a long shot off the stick of Kretschia. Stapleton down the left board. Wants to Shadrin. Far side, Mihaila with Bodenoff. He was stick checked. Baxton comes up with it. Gets it ahead to center right. Now 30 seconds to go on the Canadian penalty. A minute and 20 to play in period two, and it's 5 3 for Canada. Yakushev away from Backstrom. Mihailov's shot is wide. Watched by Stapleton. Backstrom digs it down the ice again. Less than 12 seconds remaining now in the Canadian penalty. As both teams change on the go. Yakushev is struck by Bernier. Five seconds in the penalty. Lyapkin inside the line. Stick checked by J.C. Tremblay. He shoots it down the ice. Lee's back on, so icing will be called. But Canada has killed another Soviet power play. I'm just sitting here, Don, chuckling to myself. Every time there's a race for the puck, I'm, I'm body checking and urge the Canadian player to get there first. They're just coming up with another fantastic effort. And McGregor and Henderson certainly killed the penalty extremely well. And the last time on the ice, our club has been down considerably, but Backstrom, Mark Howe, and Gordy Howe showed some spark and turned the tide, and the crowd really appreciated it. It's just a great effort by the two veterans and young Mark. From the faceoff, 50 seconds to play in the period. It is cleared to center ice. Rajan who battled it ahead. Sagankov now for the Soviets to Shadrin into Lividev. Body there by Schmier. Carrying on is number 19. 
on the board. Into the corner again goes Shadrin. Good body checking by the Canadians in their own defensive zone now. They were not doing it effectively in the early part of this game, but it's come on to hit well. Here's Shakushev off his stick to the short side wide. Rick Smith backhands it down the ice, touched by a high stick, and they will whistle it down with 25 seconds to play. Morris Kerlagan, whose team fell behind by three in the opening period, now has narrowed that margin to a two-goal deficit at 5-3 on the goal by Yakishev from Lebedev at 11.04 of this, the second period. Now 25 seconds remaining. Here's an example of how they're hitting. Schmier on Harlemont. You can almost finish your opponent by doing that, too. He's played well, Schmier. Smith joins him on the bench now. The face-off. The Quah lost that one. Wins it the second time around. Held in by the Soviets. And now Bobby Hull has it with 18 seconds to play in the period. Off the glass. Hard drive by Hull. Rolls down the Soviet blue line. Lyaskin number five. The Quah four checking. Up to Shadrin. Ahead to Lebedev. Bumped by Stapleton. Off the puck. Bromley takes over. One second left. And that is the end of the second period. With the score, Canada 5 and the Soviets 3. This is game 4 from Vancouver. Well, we're in the stands with the fans at the Pacific Coliseum, and I don't know that uh, really anybody be watching more closely than some of these people. Colleen, how are you? You have a lot to watch all at one time. I've got this whole great team to watch tonight, and it's pretty exciting, as you can just imagine. I just wish everyone in Canada could be here tonight. Were you a little surprised at the way Gordy was playing in the first oh, period? He was hitting everybody he could catch. No, uh, he believes in giving is better than receiving. <laughs> You're enjoying the game. <laughs> it's a good philosophy. Joanne Hull is here, and uh, Bobby had an incredible first period, and I think you must be almost as tired as he is. Oh, I'm, excuse me. Yes, I, I am. I don't know if I'm going to last this whole series. I hope he keeps it up. The whole team is playing just beautifully, and I hope that we just do as well in Moscow. I think the fans in Vancouver are enjoying this game particularly. They were criticized before, not today. Oh, they're wonderful fans. They're just cheering us on, and I think it's just great. Okay, Joanne, I hope you enjoy the rest of the game. And this fellow is Dick Garrett, who's come all the way from Calgary, and uh, I think the trip is worthwhile. Oh, very much so, Bill. Certainly enjoying it. First period was very fast. Second period slowed down a little due to the ice, and of course there's a tremendous amount of people in the arena. Okay, hey, young man, you come. I see you at nearly every hockey game in Vancouver. What's your name? Raleigh Bass. You enjoying this one? Yeah, and uh, let's hope we don't get another one of those goals the referee doesn't see. Because on Thursday night, that goal didn't count because the referee didn't see it. And in all hockey, if the referee doesn't see it, it doesn't Whoa. count. I hope Howie Meeker is watching and paying close attention. We'll see you soon. You enjoying this game? Very much so. It's a whale of a good game, and I think the Russians are going to win it. I think you really have to take your, your hat off uh, to the Russians here, the way they've come back in the second period. I agree. It, it's a must. You have to take your hat off to the Russians. I really think you should. Doing a very nice job. And uh, Johnny, so I don't know if that was one of your spares that he borrowed or not, but uh, I think it's time we got back as the teams are both out on the ice, and let's go to Dodge Chevrier. Okay, Bill, a lot of folks across Canada have flipped their wigs watching this hockey series. You know, we have a presentation tonight of a set of Olympic coins to a former hockey great of years gone by, a member of the 1920 Olympic team for Canada, won the gold medal in Belgium. This is Mr. Frank Fredrickson of Vancouver, who was with that team receiving the Olympic coin set from Lula Fave, the president of the National Sport and Recreation Center in Ottawa, and he looked pretty pleased about the whole thing. So we are just seconds away from the resumption of play for period three. The shot song goal at the end of 40 minutes by the Russians, 22, by the Canadians, 19. But on the board, it's five for Canada and three for the USSR. As Jerry Cheevers and Vladislav Trechak, the two individuals who, of course, will face the most pressure in this period, warm up for the action. Trechak has not been scored upon since 1749 of the opening period when Bobby Hull capped his hat trick. Alexander Yakushev narrowed the deficit to 5-3 to three at 11.04 of the second period for the only goal of that middle frame. 
So we have 20 minutes to go in the Canadian portion of the Super Hockey Series 1974. From here, they'll move to Moscow. But before that, a game in Finland and a game in Sweden at the end of this week, opening in Moscow on October 1st. Of course, you'll see all the games from the Soviet Union, live via satellite. And via satellite. Alexander Yakushev, the great star, with now 12 goals in 12 games against Canada's pros. And the clock is acting up again. It's down to nine minutes already as we begin the first 10-minute portion of this third period. They'll change ends at the 10-minute mark. All right, third period's underway. Kusev, front of his own goal. They leave the puck for Frank Mahovlich. It comes out to Harlemov. Three on two inside the line with Mihailov. Mihailov getting set to Petrov. Jams it. Picked up by J.C. Tromblay. Back comes Team Canada. Frank Mahovlich over the line. Watched by Vasilia. Checked by Vasilia. He gets the puck in behind the goal. Starts out the right side. Here's Gordy Howe. For Frank Mahovlich. Backstrom also cruising in there. An open big pass. Nobody there. And here's Harlamov with Mihailov. Two on two. Back for Mihailov. Passes in front. No Soviet player there. And Jerry Cheevers pounces on it. Face off to Cheevers left. Soviets make a change. Team Canada stays with that line. Shadrin with Yekashev and Lebedev. An effective line for the USSR in the series. Back to Sterling in the circle. Now the official finally drops the puck. Stapleton to the line. Held in by Lyapkin. A shot. Christmas wide. Deflection there by Shadrin. It almost went in. Here is Lee. Up the boards for Howe. Too far. Sagankov lost to the Ralph Backstrom against Lyapkin. Bad angle, forced off in the corner. Now centers it in front. Oh, a great throwing chance there for Mark Howe. Just missing. Here's Ricky Lee with Gordy Howe. Lee's taken down. No penalty called by the Polish official. And the crowd here gets on Waldo Sapecki. The penalties have been very much in the Soviets' favor in this game. Here's Jakushev. Bumped by Gordy Howe as he finished off the pass. Down to Ricky Lee. The clock has stopped now. We have no idea of time in the early minutes of this third period. The action with now cruising there. Goes behind his own goal. Now Team Canada's captain, Pat Stapleton, has it. Good pass to the squad, broken up by Shadrin. Gordy Howe back checking. Lebedev with a chance. Now the ball. With Howe on the right side. Over to young Mark Howe. He could not get the shot away. Blocked by Sagankov and the puck goes into the crowd. Look at Backstrom with the puck here. He just makes a great play. He stops in the corner. He's headed off with the gulch. And look at him throw it right across to Mark Howe. And Mark gets it right on the stick. Tries to put it up high, but Trecek makes a big save. He wasn't buying it, Trecek. He came across the goal mouth with Howe to block it beautifully. Now Maltsev in the Soviet zone. Back to the defenseman number three, Luchenko. Enterized Bobby Hall hopped over McKenzie's stick. Luchenko, nobody there for the pass. Beyond Paul Schmier going for it now is number 30, Klimov. On the ice for the first time tonight against Schmier. And behind the goal is Klimov. He could not center it out. Rick Smith takes over and gets it out over the line. And he's going to control a bouncing puck. They send McKenzie away on the right side. Inside the line, the Soviets clear it out. At number 30, Konstantin Klimov on the ice. Right side pass. Maltsev almost bumped into Schmier. Didn't see him. Now is Johnny McKenzie being watched by Luchenko. Carries on. Centers it out. The pass hopped over Lacroix's stick. Klimov to Ann Easton. Shot out and into the crowd by Rick Smith. And I believe that caught a spectator. Time shows seven minutes. The clock is in error, is malfunctioning. 7.06 is the official time, we are informed, in the first half of this third period. Five to three, Team Canada maintains the lead. Going ahead five, two in the first. The Soviets, one in the second. And that spectator appears to be all right. A little bump on the head. Here is Henderson against Vasiliev. 
Leads the puck. Walsh shot. Bad angle. Rebound. McGregor had it out of control on his stick in front of the open side. Now Petrov up the left board. Vasiliev has a broken stick. Soviets now get him one as they sweep down the ice. Fire them off. Losing it inside the line to Bruce McGregor, but he's alone out there at center ice against three Russian players. And Vasiliev comes up with it. Four checked by Mike Walton. Drives Vasiliev back inside the blue line. For Petrov. Now Mihailov away to Vasiliev. Off of skates. Mihailov leaps back to center. Now gets it to Petrov at the blue line. It hops into the player's box and is caught. By backup goalie Don McLeod, who will play next season for the Vancouver Blazers. Right here in the Pacific Coliseum. 6.20 to play in the opening half of the third period. The cloud victimized for eight goals in Winnipeg Saturday. You could not fold him on all eight, of course. The Soviets tested him severely. He blocked a penalty shot. That was the Soviet team's first win. Right now they trail 5-3. Early in the third period of game four here in Vancouver. Shadrin. Slides up now for the faceoff against Mike Walton. Gets it over to Levy Dev on the right side. Chops it down, then gets body checked. Into the Canadian corner. J.C. Trombley ahead to McGregor. Link wide now for Paul Henderson. Henderson winds up a long shot. Trips wide. Ralph Baxter against Levy Dev. Over skates it. Number 19, Shadrin to Yakishev. Back to Shadrin. Bunk carries on into the corner. Marty Howe coming up with it. He was hammered by Levy Dev. The Afghan did not hold it in. There's an offside of the Canadian line. The Soviet player really threw his weight around there, Howie. Just about two minutes before you saw that check, Marty Howe took him pretty good over in the boards and give it to him. And you see Lebedev as they parted, turn around and get uh, Howe's number right here. And look at him sneak in behind the net. Gets the stick up pretty high. Holy gee. What do you call that? That's got to be high sticking. The attendance tonight, 15,772 at the Pacific Coliseum. Enjoying this fourth game of the series. We hope you are right across the country. Now here is Lee Aptin getting it over on the right side. Shadrin plays it across the line, broken up by Pat Stapleton. He pumps it down the ice, and the Canadians are told for icing. Among this large crowd, many fans from all across Western Canada and British Columbia in particular, a group of 117 here tonight from Prince George, B.C. They've traveled more than 500 miles from the northeast of Vancouver to watch this game. An estimated 2,500 fans from across Canada going to Moscow at the end of the week for the resumption of this hockey series. Now here is Pat Stapleton to Frank Mahavlis. He's got a goal tonight. Bobby Hull has three. Gordy Howe has one. Team Canada leads 5-3. Rejan Hull as they contact the puck there at center ice into the crowd. They'll have a face-off. 5-17 remaining now in the period. Bernier with Hull and Mahavlet. There's the Premier of British Columbia, Mr. David Barrett. Maltsev checked by Rejan Hull. Hull moves up with Frank Mahovlich. They bunch together there. Hull jams it inside the Soviet line. Got a body check from Luchenko. Carries on beside the goal. Now Ricky Lee has it. Turning away from Luchenko. Behind the goal for Frank Mahovlich. Mahovlich waiting, centering it back on the point for Lee. Cradles the puck there. Swings away from Klimov. Down the boards. is shot high. Blocked in front. Rebound! Oh, the great save! Off Hull by Kretschak. Here's Bernier across to the far point. Lee keeps it in to Mahavlich. His pass out blocked. It finally comes to Bernier. Bernier, the hole, hopped over his stick. Canada all around the Soviet goal. Mahavlich for hole. Now Klimov starts out. Ricky Lee takes over. Waits for Frank Mahavlich to get onside. He did not get out of time. And now Bernier is punching away at Klimov. And the linesman moves in to separate them. With the score, Canada 5, the Soviets 3. This is game four from Vancouver.
Это банк, где люди составляют разницу. 4.18 left in the first half of this third period. 5-3, Canadians leading the Soviet Union. Paul Schmier behind his own goal. Away from the high line. At the blue line, a center right pass for Gordie Howe. Across the blue line, Howe still with it. In front of the goal, a centering pass for number 11. His son, Markov, was broken up. And here's Harlemov. Harlemov with Mihailov. A lot of ice time for this line. It's gloved by cheaters for a face-off. A game recorder gives Pat Staple a nuts watch for a moment. Lee just made a great play here to get the puck into Mihailovich. Look, Mihailovich control it and throw it over to, to who and who get two good shots at it. Soviets win that face-off, smearing behind his own goal to Gordie Howe on the right boards. Ahead now to Ralph Backstrom. Backstrom is going down to two-on-one with Mark. Oh, a great check there on Backstrom by Vasiliev, number six. And here's Harlemov to Mihailov. Petrov, number 16, looks for it. It's offside. I was going to say the game recorder gives Pat Stapleton plus three on overall performance tonight. That's based on checking, passing, shooting, and overall defensive play for the Team Canada captain. Here's the check that Backstrom had to endure. Gee, just a dandy. He was waiting for young Mark Howe to come up in the clear. He tried to stop and let the Russian player go by him, but that Russian had dead sight. He says nobody hits at international hockey, Howie. Here's J.C. Tremblay in behind the Canadian goal. Gave it away to Shadran. Bouncing puck for the Soviets. Harlemov took a swat at it. It's finally whistled down. A high stick cut it. The Soviet player down in front of the goal, Shadran, and... Cheevers is calling for the Russian trainer to come out. Shadrin got a stick high on the face. And a concerned and very sportsmanlike Jerry Cheevers motioned for the Soviet trainer. Who has not made a move. He was scraped there high on the cheek. Here it is again. You can just see a shot of this here. Now just watch. The Russian player is just sort of tapped in the heel, and down he goes. The puck will come out of the corner. He hit his face on the ice, but he skates off apparently all right. Here now is number five and number 23. The two players are going to be a penalty against one of the two. McKenzie running into Lyapkin. And the Canadians are protesting, so evidently they caught McKenzie. Hear the crowd react to the left. There's a pretty good two-hander right there, but look at this. High sticking. McKenzie gets the stick up pretty high, and I would say that's a pretty good call because that's about the third time he's had a borderline infraction. You just don't do that type of thing in international hockey, and particularly when you're leading five to three late in the game. Crowd incensed about the slash just prior to that. Now McKenzie taunting the Soviets in front of their bench. Now slowly, uh Swings away, is making no move in the direction of the penalty box. They may be giving double penalties here because both gates are open. Yes, there are two penalties. Chadron gets one. Two minutes for slashing. Time six. Now, wait a minute. They have not given McKenzie a penalty at all. Shadron gets the only penalty for slashing. You might have seen on the replay before the contact was made by McKenzie, he was slashed by Shadron, and that is the call they made. Well, I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I kind of think we get a bit of an edge in a deal like that. But certainly that's uh, it's quite a break for Team Canada, and I don't know what the referee was looking at, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Down. Uh, looked it up uh, to warrant penalties both ways. And originally the gates were open both ways, but just the one Soviet penalty. And play goes right on with about three minutes to play in the first half of the final period. 5 3 for Canada. The Canadians with a manpower advantage. There's a bump by McKenzie on Gusev. Could not take him off the puck, though. Soviets so far are killing it, controlling it. Mihailov away back to Petrov. McKenzie now and Mihailov swinging sticks at each other. There's going to be a penalty. The Soviets will get even again on penalties. Delayed call is in effect. The Soviet goalie's out of the net. Open wing pass for Mihailov. Shoots it back down into his own zone. Mind you, that goes in. That counts off a Soviet stick of the open net, but it was wide. 
And the Soviets now being checked by McKenzie, who finally wins the puck, and I think McKenzie will finally get the penalty he missed the last time. He chopped the Soviet player Mihailov right in front of the Russian bench. He's lucky he didn't get another one after the referee had called the penalty, but certainly the Russians played it smart. All they wanted to do was to kill off their own penalty. They'll get a man advantage for a much longer period of time now. If they could have just hung on to that puck till their penalty was up, then they'd have given Team Canada the puck, and they'd have had that full man advantage for two minutes. It's called elbow. Here is the penalty right here. That's the first, that's the one they called, and he swung at Mihailov in front of the bench, and the referee did not see that. 7.30 is the time for elbowing to McKenzie, so the Soviets will ultimately have the advantage here. Shadrian has served some time. The clock shows two minutes remaining in his penalty. That cannot be correct. So for the moment, the teams are even at five aside. Gusev gives it to Mihailov. Now starting up is Vasiliev. Back to Gusev, his defense partner, at the Canadian blue line. Here is the pass from Yakushev, too far from Mihailov, around the board for Vasiliev. Paul Schmier has it. Schmier takes his time, beats Rick Smith behind the net. Now in turn, back to Schmier, being watched by Mihailov. Coming up with it is Petrov, getting it out to Vasiliev. Vasiliev. Away from Mahava, Schmier takes the run of the Soviet player, Mihailov, and the puck is finally cleared down the ice. Penalties could be costly here in the final period as Canada protects the two-goal lead, five to three. Here is Vladimir Petrov winding up with a pass behind Gusev. Rick Smith takes over, gets away from Boris Mihailov, feeds Frank Mahavlich, it's whistled down offside. Offside of the Soviet blue line. With a minute and a half left until they'll change ends at the 10 minute mark of the final period. Here's some pretty good series of checks right here. Look at this. Frank keeps the stick down. The Russian gets it up just a little bit. Here's another good check. Watch Schmier. Good thing he didn't have two hands on the stick. The referee's right there, and he's let that type of thing go all night long, so as long as he's consistent. Howie, the Soviets have 15 seconds to kill off their penalty, and then for the following 45, with McKenzie having a minute left in his sentence, they will have the manpower advantage. Coming out now, Henderson and McGregor with Stapleton and Tromblay. For the Soviets, Maltsev and Lebedev with Sagankov and Luchenko. This is Stapleton. Ahead for McGregor. Could not get to it. Lebedev with Maltsev now inside the line. Broken up by Tromblay. Tromblay to Bruce McGregor behind him. Back comes Lebedev. Lebedev as the Soviet penalty expires to Maltsev. His shot is blocked. Cleared off the boards by Cheaters. And whistled down. Or the face off beside the Canadian goal. And for the next 40 seconds approximately, with McKenzie finishing his penalty time, the Soviets will have a power play. Our defense seemed to be backing up, backing up a little too deep, and sooner or later, one of the Russian players is going to pop one home from the top of the circle. We have to meet the Russians as they're coming over our blue line, and I believe the main fault is our forwards are just getting caught too often. McGregor lost to Shadrin. Lebedev bumps into the official, clears in front. Now McGregor had to hop off his stick as he overskates the puck, but then he centers up and comes up. Minutes to play in the first half of period number three here in Vancouver. Kretschak beside his goal, clears ahead to Sagankov. Right side pass for Lebedev with Shadron and Maltsev. Inside the Canadian line, Shadron shooting. Paul Henderson got his stick on it and goes to the corner for Lebedev. Sagankov, Lebedev. Behind the net. They can't set it out. Pat Stable and ties up Maltsev. Now Lebedev does pass it out to Bruce McGregor. Here's a breakout for McKenzie out of the penalty box. One on one. McKenzie right side. Shoot. Blocked by Kretschak. Tried to clear. Couldn't get enough wood on it. Back comes Maltsev. Just seconds left in period three. The first ten minute part of it. Stable it against Lebedev. Wins the puck. Pass behind McKenzie at center right. McKenzie with Bobby Hall now on. The team were full strength. McKenzie fell against the Gamkov with Maltsev. Fakes the shot. Goes in. And Lebedev has it as the buzzer sounds. 
to end the first half of the third period. With the score, Canada five and the Soviets three, this is game four from Vancouver. Canada is an energy-rich country, but we consume over 45,000 gallons of oil every minute, over two and a half million gallons every hour. That's more than 63 million gallons every single day. But Canada's available oil resources won't last forever. If we continue using oil at this rate without finding new sources, we'll run out. We have to find more. Last year, Gulf Canada spent over $57 million finding and developing new energy resources. And this year, we'll spend more than $110 million. Gulf is confident that the petroleum reserves are there, enough to meet our needs for generations to come. To find them, it takes time and money. Gulf is working to stop a future supply shortage by spending that time and money now. When Johnny McKenzie hits like this, he's a real asset. No doubt at all. That just sort of makes the Russian keep his head up. Didn't get quite enough of them, though, as McKenzie fell, but that contact is so important to keep the Soviet team off balance or else they'll just free skate on you all night. I think that's the key. As long as the Russians know when they get the puck, there's somebody coming at them, and when they shoot it or pass it, there's going to be bodily contact. We have 10 minutes left in the hockey game. Canada leads 5-3. to three. They've led since midway in the opening period. But they've not scored since 1749 of the opening period. And now, as we resume the final 10 minutes, here is Bobby Hull with it. Getting it ahead for McKenzie. Now, Lacroix. Crossed the Soviet line against Gusev. Stopping to McKenzie. Could not jam it down toward Bobby Hull near the crease, and Mihailov comes back to the Soviet. Mihailov leaving it for Petrov. Back to Mihailov. Oh, and he shot wide. Play is whistled down. There's going to be a hooking penalty here. Penalty appears to be against the Canadian team, but we'll wait for it. Johnny McKenzie gets another penalty. That's expensive. Picks up Harmon. Look at he's got him right from the red line in, and he stays with him. Now when that shot comes across the net, McKenzie is keeping Harmon up to the outside, who would have probably cut in and tucked it in. It's Hooking at 10:26 uh, of the third period, his third penalty of the game, and McKenzie's sixth of the four-game series. Don, I watched McKenzie pick Harmon off up right at their blue line, and at no time did I think he really hooked him. Here's Gusev from the left point. Now, long shot deflected by Cheevers off the glass. How failed to clear into the corner. Staple and golfs at it, tipped but not out. Vasiliev on the stick of table and off the board. Still kept in. Now finally cleared as Howe makes a check on Vasiliev. Vasiliev digs it back over center to Gusev. And now Mihailov with it. The Soviets with plenty of scoring chances here to get back the goals they need. They trail by two. Their power play is in effect right now. J.C. Tromblay to Pat Stapleton. Taking lots of time. Now under pressure gets it ahead for Mark Howe. Steps inside the line and back out again. Over to Backstrom, and they work that four man long box penalty killing unit. Off the board, Howe leaves it now finally for Gusev. It's the Soviets wind up. Over the Canadian blue line. Arlamov had it blocked by McGregor. Gets a second chance now. Waits for Gusev to get onside. Speeds it ahead for Petrov. Mark Howe comes up with it with McGregor inside the line. Two on one. Bruce couldn't get it back to Mark. Play goes in behind the Soviet goal. This is number six, Vasilia. At center ice for Shadrin. Shadrin checked by Henderson. Arlamov against Stapleton and Henderson. They swing it over to the far open point. McGregor comes up with it and shoots it down the ice. No indication on the penalty time. The clock is not operating. We estimate 30 seconds of McKenzie's penalty remain. Here is J.C. Tromblay. As again, Canada works well as a penalty killing unit against the Soviet Union. A power play of the Soviets, awesome in 1972. Quite ineffective by comparison this time. 
Here is Shadrin against Stapleton. Back to Mihailov. Left point pass to Siliev. Shot wide. Round the boards. It comes to Paul Henderson. McKenzie's out of the box with no stick in his hand. Relieved by Frank Mahovlich. And it goes to the stick of J.C. Trombley now. Another Russian power play has been denied. Shadrin to Vasiliev. Gets it over to Lachenko. Back to Vasiliev playing games in front of his own goal. Oh, and Staple almost popped that pass up. Mahavlik now brings it in with third. Bernier shoots and stopped by Trechak. Got it low to the short side. And now Lachenko behind the goal. Sends it ahead for Lebedev. Too far at center ice for Shadrin. That'll be icing against the Soviet Union with about six minutes and 20 seconds to play. Don, Team Canada can afford to get awful cozy with that puck. There's just no threat at all of the Russians moving in and hitting them. Pat Stapleton at one time just had the puck standing still, and as the Russian come to him, the Russian slowed down and slowed down, so Pat was able to hang on to the puck as long as he could. And you can play pretty good hockey when you know you're not going to get hit. And that's the feeling that Team Canada has right now, why they're dominating it. From the face-off in the Soviet zone, it is Luchenko ahead to Shadrin. He gets it out to center ice. Paul Schmier puts it right back inside the blue line. Lebedev lost the puck to serves Bernier. Bernier turned around, passed it down to the left corner, and Sagankov has to go back for it. Mahavlis charging after Sagankov. Slowed him up, left the puck there. For Maltsev, Maltsev clearing rink wide on the left side and finally back to center, but Mahavlis breaks that play up. The big L at center right, away from Shadrin. To Rizam, who back to Mahavlis, a shot, rebound, cleared by Shadrin. Maltsev at the Canadian line, away from Schmier, dropped it back, broken up by Rizam, who. Poole ahead to Serge Bernier. Down the board. Bodied by Lushenko. Carries on. Waits for a man to pass. To nobody in close. Goes back into the corner again. Finally lost to Sagankov. And Lushenko has it. 5.45 to play in the game. Now it's center right. That's the Canadian line. Gordy Howe was it. Wins away from number seven Sagankov. Banks it off his leg and down the ice. As Canada changes on the go. Gennady Sagankov across to Luchenko. At the blue line, rink wide for Petrov, batted out to center again. Canadians so far holding the USSR at bay in the closing minutes of this hockey game. That's Gable and Blake shot pass for Petrov up. He went down. There's no penalty called on the play. No penalty. Here's Harlemo inside the line. Over on the left side for Mihailov. Behind the boards, off the back of the goal. Picked up by number two, Ricky Lee. Ahead to number 11, Mark Howe with five minutes left. Lee down the right board, stop. Puts it out to Gordy Howe, he shoots. Kretschak holds on to that one. You have to watch this. One of the few elbows I've ever seen Gordy Howe take, but it didn't take him long to get it back. Harlmanov, as they were fighting for the puck, Along the board, gave Gordy a pretty good shot right in the head. And look at Harmanoff as a result of it, fixing the helmet. Gordy just took a look at him and went right back at him and said, here, whether you're Russian, Canadian, or American, you don't do that to Mr. Howe. Just before that, you saw what the fans here in Vancouver felt should have been a tripping call against the Soviets. Off the face of it, hit the goalpost. A hard drive by Johnny McKenzie, hit the goalpost. Here's Howe. Oh, over the top of the goal. Finally out to center right. Two great scoring drives there by McKenzie and Bobby Hall. Now Petrov shoots it down to the right corner. Go by Howe and into the back of the Soviet bench. And another spectator has been injured. Hard, hard drive came out and they're helping that young man out immediately. A little over four minutes to play in the game. Team Canada five, the Soviet Union three. In this crucial game, the barring a tie will determine which team goes ahead, leading into the final four games in Moscow, beginning on October the 1st. You'll see them all via satellite live. 
Crowd begins to chant. Shadron wins the draw. Is passed back too far. McKenzie fell against Lushenko, and Lebedev has it. Now McKenzie trying to work it ahead to Bobby Hull. Does. Hull against Shadron shoots it down the right side. And Lushenko in behind the Soviet goal. Fires a lead pass out of about 4.10 to play now. Shadron at center right. With Malstead. Lebedev with shot high and wide. Rebound. A big one out in front. Held and there's no penalty call. The official was a good 50 feet away over on the far boards. McKenzie gives him a glance and produces no reaction. Off the face off, they score right off the face off. The Soviets put it in to make it five to four. With the score, Canada five and the Soviets four. This is game four from Vancouver. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. Hey, tell presents the fabulous Johnny Cash today. 24 of his greatest hits. I fell into a burning ring of fire. The very beautiful. If I were a carpenter and you were a lady. And of course. Understand, you man. Bad Get Johnny Cash today. 24 of his greatest hits, plus a free 8x10 photo. $4.99 from K-Town. Tape or cassette, $6.99. Greatest hits, plus a free 8x10 photo. $4.99 from K-Town. Tape or cassette, $6.99. Here's the goal again off the face-off by number 10, Alexander Malta. wins the draw here. No one moves out on him. And look how quick he gets the shot away. Off the toe of Cheever's stick, on the post, and in. His second goal in this series is five to four, and the Soviets are only a goal down now. Here's Petrov shooting it down. Expects some pressure from the USSR now. Here's Lee against Mihailov, tying it up for a faceoff. A quick goal has put the Soviets right back in contention. Just a case down of someone not picking up the man and run right by him. On a faceoff like that, someone has to move out and just stay with him and take him. From the face-off, Schmier forced behind his net into the corner by Harlamov. A centering pass, worse in front. Cheevers hangs on. He lost sight of it for a moment in that maze of legs with Smith there in the high loft, but came up with it. 3.31 to play. 5-4 for Canada. Line change now by Billy Harris. Sixteen oh eight is the corrected time of that fourth Soviet goal. Again, Billy Harris, no emotion, watching as his players make a change. He'll send out Tremblay and Stapleton on the blue line, along with Bernier and Hull and Mahavlich as the forward attackers. Petrov on the faceoff for the Russians. Horrible, fast shot. Cheevers just thought of the last moment of the glove hand. That could have tied it up right there. Petrov has it go behind him, and finally here's Frank Mahavlich. Down the left side, inside the blue line, was checked by number two, Alexander Gusev. Harlamov sending Mihailov away with Petrov now inside the blue line. Pass J.C. Tromblay. Stableton bumps Petrov in the corner. Mihailov back out to Gusev. is shot. Goal! High game! The Soviets have come back to tie it up. There's no one stopping here to out at the point. The Russian goes in here, outfights two fellas for the puck, throws it back. Four Canadians going out to screen the puck, and a good shot picks this bottom right-hand corner. There it is again, throw it out in front. Screen shot, Cheever's practically no chance on it at all. The Russian's just out-hustling it, picking up the loose puck in the corner and getting it back out to the point. Gusev from Mihailov and Petrov at 16.59. He's got three minutes and one second to play, and they're tied 5-5. Puck goes into the Canadian bench, and there'll be a face-off. Canada led 5-2 in the first period. It was 5-3 after two, and now these goals by Maltsev and Gusev just 51 seconds apart here in the final period have tied the game. The Gankov goes behind his own goal, being watched by Baxter, and they get it out to center right. Here gave the puck to Levy there. 
Lebedev alone in there now, being watched by Smear, bumped off it. And Mark Howe takes over behind the Team Canada goal. Gets it out over the blue line. Luchenko for Shadrin, off the official. Back to Shadrin again to Maltsev. Tobias looking strong now, pressing for the go-ahead goal. Down to Cheever's doorstep, left for number 18, Paul Schmier. To Gordy Howe, to his leg. Shot from a bad angle, was handled by Cheevers, who shoots it to Gordy Howe. Now Howe, over to Mark Howe, his 19-year-old son, inside the line, he's taken down. There is going to be a penalty. There's going to be a Soviet penalty. Tripping. Number seven, I believe, Sagankov goes to the box. As soon as Gordy come out over the blue line, he was looking for his son over there, and there's no doubt about it. The youngster had the Russian beat. The Russian stuck out his foot and tripped him. So but it's the experience of Gordy coming Even across that forward, blue line. He knew that Mark would be coming up in the far wing, laid it right on his stick. So Canada gets the power play advantage with a little over two minutes to play. Billy Harris is going to send on Johnny McKenzie with Gordy Howe, Lacroix Mahavlich out there now. Here's that fifth tying goal for the Soviet Cheevers of Screen. Gusev from the point scoring it. 5-5. Now some instructions for goaltender Tretiak from Coach Boris Kulagin. Montreal on Tretiak's helmet. This is quite a switch, Don. Normally, Team Canada has finished exceptionally strong in all the previous games, and that's the last six or seven minutes, and they look to have pretty good control of this contest for the last, oh, three or four minutes. And once again, it's that Russian conditioning, I think, in this real hot Winnipeg arena that stood them in good stead. They've only had the advantage of the power play three times tonight. They scored once. Lacroix from the faceoff, Mahavlich on the board, battling for it. Lacroix joins in there against the Soviet player Petrov, and they'll force another faceoff. What a finish we're in for. Canada with a power play. Sagankov in the penalty box for tripping. Lacroix gets it back to Bobby Howe. Gordy Howe! Oh, and Petschak saw it all the way and made the catch. We now have two minutes of official time remaining. Team Canada has two pretty good or two pretty good hockey players playing the point. Howe and Hull. Here's McKenzie getting it in front for Lacroix. He was hammered down by Luchenko, and the Soviets shoot it down the ice. Scores 5-5. Minutes, about 40 seconds remaining now in the hockey game. Here's Gordy Howe to center ice, the Soviet line, almost getting through. Back to Bobby Howe, makes the move on Petrov, then works down the right board. Leaves it there for McKenzie. He couldn't dig it out. And oh, almost a break from a high loss as they try to beat him at center ice. Frank Mahovlich now in his own zone against Petrov. Gave it away. Here's Mahilov with a chance to kill more time and dump it down to the Team Canada corner with a minute and ten left. Bobby Hull. Center ice. Soviet blue line. He's got three goals tonight. All in the first period. Uh, Howe passes it across for Gordy Howe. Howe shoots. Oh, it goes wide. Off the boards, an open side. A high off, a long pass to Petrov. They do not whistle it down. It appeared to be over two lines in front. Howe recovers for Canada and gives the puck to Lacroix off Petrov. McKenzie for Bobby Howe. Howe across the blue line. The Frank Mahovlich. Mahovlich had a go behind him. And Petrov starts out. Only seconds left now. 30 seconds in the game. And a few seconds left in Sagankov's penalty. Valiasev shoots it down the ice into the corner. And Gordy Howe goes back for it. The score is 5 5. The Soviets appear to have killed this power play with 15 seconds left. Here comes Rejan Hul down the side of Paul Henderson in front for Henderson. Couldn't get a shot. Still loose in there. But the Gankov's on the ice at full strength. Race for it. Here's Harlamov against J.C. Plombley. Into the corner. It's all over. The Soviets have come from behind. We're on a 5-5 time. As 
as Team Canada failed to score with a last second power play opportunity. So with the Canadian portion over, they finish up with a win each and two ties in the four games played from Quebec City ending in Vancouver here tonight. So with the final score, Canada five and the Soviets five, this is game four from Vancouver. Here we've got something very special for Canadian hockey fans in the WHA. The Quebec Nordiques, Toronto Toros, my own Winnipeg Jets, the Edmonton Oilers and the Vancouver Blazers are all in one new division, the Canadian division. That means we'll play more games in Canada against our Canadian competition. Add that kind of fan interest to what you'll see from the rest of the WHA, where high round draft picks and prized European and North American additions have made all teams stronger, and you'll know why season tickets are really moving. There are still some good season tickets available, but you'll have to act quickly if you want to be part of a great league, not only this year, but for years to come. Call the team ticket office in your area right now. There'll be someone there to answer your questions and deal with your requests. Join the WHA. You'll have a lot of fun. See exciting hockey, and you'll find it's something the entire family can get involved in. I mean, we've already proven that, haven't we, Dico? All right there, Bob. Yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here are the two players selected by a panel of Canadian and Soviet sports writers as the most valuable players of the game. For the Soviet side, Alexander Yakushev. And for the Team Canada, Bobby Hull. The presentation of the prestige sets of Series 2 Olympic coins will be made by Mr. Harold Wright, the President of the Canadian Olympic Association. Just a slight bit of confusion down at ice level because this is the end of the first half of the series. There is the special award for the most gentlemanly player on either side to be selected by the uh, touring writers and broadcasters and television people from the Soviet Union. They're picking the most gentlemanly player on either side. And then, of course, we're having the usual selection of the most valuable player from either side. And uh, you've just heard that it was Bobby Hull and uh, Yakushev, but they were to go to two different places, and as a result, a slight confusion down there on the ice. But one thing we have learned, as Brad Selwood said in the second period, they can't go to sleep for a minute, or less than a minute, because in the space of 51 seconds, the Soviets came bouncing back in that third period, just when it looked like the Canadians were prepared to sit and protect a two-goal lead, but at the 1608 mark, and then at the 1659 mark, Multsev scoring, then Gustav and his pat the drive from the line made it 5-5, and that's the way we wind up. Let's go upstairs now to Don Chevrier. Okay, Johnny. Well, until uh, four minutes remain, the Canadians have the lead. They'd held that since late in the first period very decisively, but as you say, uh, you can't afford to relax for a moment. For a quick shot, Cheever screened on one for sure, maybe two, and the Soviets tied it. I think what happens is that we certainly didn't maintain our momentum in that second and third period. Here's the face-off in here. Look, at we actually won the draw, and the Canadian defenseman put it out on Maltese stick, and that was a 5-4 goal right there. We won the draw. Now here's it going into the corner. Pat tries to take out the rush, and the Russian spins off, makes contact with the puck. 13 picks it up and throws it out. Now we've got four fellows going out to block the shot. And look, it's just on in the corner. And two forwards of the Soviets parked right there, either side of Jerry Cheevers. The puck was in cleanly. Well, uh, it's heartbreaking for this team, but uh, they certainly are in much better shape than in 1972, when Team Canada of that year left uh, behind after four games in Canada. 
They're all even now. As a matter of fact, they're even in goals at 17 goals apiece. They were even tonight in shots on goal at 31 apiece. They've each won a game and they've tied two games. So it shows you that this is a tremendously even and competitive series, Howie. And with the score, Canada 5 and the Soviet 5, this is game four from Vancouver. <laughs> Одна из многих вещей, которые мне нравятся в Канаде, это рост наличных сбережений. Простой способ сберегать рубли и копейки. Вы только скажите в Торонто Доминин, сколько вы хотите сберечь и когда вы хотите вложить их в банк. Все остальное они сделают. Соответствующие суммы будут переводиться с вашего чекового счета на ваш сберегательный счет автоматически. Это так просто. А люди такие хорошие. Это банк, где люди составляют разницу. Bobby Hull, the outstanding Canadian player on the ice today in Vancouver. And Bobby, uh, a sensational first period. Yes, we came out. Uh, apparently we were ready. Uh, uh, we, we stuck to our game plan of our first two games. And we kind of bottled the Soviet team up. We got our opportunities and we put the puck in the net. I don't know what happened after that. You put three of them in the net, and it was a little surprising the way Team Canada came back in that period after they, they really started slowly. Uh, yes, we did, but uh, I believe it was just a matter of, of course, uh, the game uh, taking its course before we got back on track and started to play the way we did in the first two games. Uh, I, I, I really, uh, it's kind of disheartening to have a three-goal lead and, uh, and blow it the way we did, but... We're, uh, uh, we're not satisfied with the tie, but we're still in pretty good shape. Was it particularly hard to play in this uh, rink today? It was so hot. It was over 80 in Vancouver, and it, uh, it must have had an effect on both clubs. Uh, we had four lines and uh, three sets of defensemen, and we were changing quickly, and I, re I really don't think it uh, took that much out of us. We, okay. just, we just let up at times, that's all. The best of luck to all of Team Canada and continued success when you go to Russia. Thank you very much. Okay. Bobby Hull, Team Canada's number one star today in this uh, series as we go back now to Johnny Sutton. And Bill, we're not going to be outdone by our Soviet friends. We also have the uh, gentlemanly award to be presented by the Caprice Awards by CTV and CBC. We'll see you all from Moscow on October 1. Thank you and good night. Game four of the Canada-Soviet series, coming to you live from Vancouver. Brought to you by Toronto Dominion Bank, the bank where people make the difference. By Gulf Oil Canada Limited, its dealers, agents, and distributors across Canada. This is the CBC Television Network.